Chapter 2 The Fall of the Golden Age Decades prior to the rise of sorceress Asha, there was a golden age of peace in Ethonia. Ethonia, the most powerful kingdom of Chaim, stood as a beacon of prosperity and unity. Its capital city gleamed with golden spires, lush gardens, and bustling streets filled with people of diverse races. King Derich, a wise and noble ruler, led Ethonia with courage. His golden armor, crafted from lightweight metals by the master smiths of Mechanora and blessed by the ministers of Sanctum, symbolized hope in a world slowly being overshadowed by darkness. Centuries before, the world of Chaim had been torn apart by the War of the Way. This brutal conflict pitted the forces of light, led by Chaim's kingdoms, against the Dark Realm of Sheolians. Once members of Chaim's ancient tribes were corrupted by dark magic and exiled to the underground world of Sheolian. They thrived on death and destruction, and it was only through the courage of King Derek I and Queen Jamila that the kingdoms united to banish the Sheolians, sealing them with powerful wards believed to last forever. But time erodes all things, even the strongest seals. As Ethonia flourished, the ancient wards began to weaken. In the shadowy depths of Sheole, Mistress Astir, the Dark Queen, worked tirelessly to unravel the magic that bound her people. Across Chaim, ominous signs began to appear. Crops withered, the air grew colder, and strange omens filled the skies. King Derek sensed the growing danger, but his warnings were dismissed by the other rulers, who were content with their peace. Determined to protect Chaim, Derich called for a council of war in Ethonia. In the Grand Council Chamber, tensions were high as the rulers of Chaim debated the threat. The darkness is rising, Derek declared. The Sheolehans are breaking free, and if we do not unite, all will be lost. King Valerius of Valoria, a seasoned warrior, was skeptical. These are ancient legends, Derek. Why should we fear them now? Derek's eyes burned with conviction. Because they have not forgotten us. The Sheolians have spent centuries plotting their revenge. Queen Seraphina of Sanctum, known for her wisdom, supported Derek. The signs are clear. We must act before it's too late. Reluctantly, the other rulers agreed to join forces, knowing that this battle would not just be fought with swords, but with ancient magics and sheer will. In the dark, labyrinthine caverns of Sheole, Mistress Astir completed her dark ritual, shattering the ancient wards. The time has come, she declared, her voice echoing with malevolent power. The kingdoms of Chaim will fall, and we shall rise to rule. The Sheolians, twisted by centuries of dark magic, roared in approval. Their time for revenge had arrived. The armies of Chaim marched to meet the forces of Sheole. The sky darkened and the earth trembled as the two sides clashed in a battle that would determine the fate of the world. King Derek, leading Ethonia's forces, fought valiantly against the advancing horde of Sheolians. The battlefield was a chaotic storm of light and darkness. In the heart of the conflict, Derek confronted Mistress Astir. With a mighty strike, he shattered her dark shield and drove his sword into her heart. But as she fell, she struck back with a cursed dagger, sealing Derek's fate. As he staggered back, the curse began to spread marking the beginning of Athonia's decline. As King Derek lay dying, he urged the leaders of Chaim to remain united. The darkness will return, he warned, his voice weak but resolute. Stand together, or all that we have built will be lost. The leaders vowed to honor his wish, but the weight of his words hung heavily over them. As news of Derek's death spread, Grief enveloped Athonia. Queen Jamila, weakened by childbirth, succumbed to her sorrow 
leaving their newborn son, Kader, as the kingdom's only hope. The curse of Sheole would haunt Ithonia's royal lineage, but the people of Chaim held on to hope, knowing that unity was their greatest strength. The funeral of King Derek and Queen Jamila was a solemn, grand affair, attended by all the kingdoms of Chaim. The ministers of Sanctum led the ceremony, honoring the fallen rulers with ancient rituals. Mechianora's citizens built a memorial destined to last a thousand years, a tribute to their legacy. As the royal entourage made its way to the final resting place, the Ikoria sang a haunting melody that echoed across the river. The Luminans and Umbrians created a breathtaking light show, and the Valorians stood in salute, their honor guard escorting the glass caskets. The Zephyrians laid a pathway of blooming flowers, their brilliant colors a final tribute to the beloved rulers. The golden age of Ethonia had ended, but the people of Chaim vowed to carry on, united against the darkness that still threatened their world. For as long as they stood together, there was hope.